In the previous video, we've had a high level discussion about interceptors. We've learned what interceptors are and why we need interceptors. In this session, we're gonna go a little bit in detail. We'll try to understand what are the different interceptors that are coming into play by default and how they're actually configured. We did realize that even without doing anything, there is something that's happening out of the box to provide us the interceptor functionality. And that's because of the default package that we use. But before we get into that, there are a few things that interceptors have to provide. So the nature of interceptors are, first of all, they have to be configurable. This is uh, one of the requirements of interceptors. We don't actually write the code to get the interceptors into play every time we need it. It is something that's kind of like plug and play. We have all the interceptor classes separately and we just configure what interceptors need to be applied to what actions. The second requirement is that they're actually Java classes, which is kind of obvious. We have separate Java classes for each interceptors and whenever we configure something, those Java classes have to do the work, whatever is coded in them, to actually do the role of the interceptor. The third requirement is that you could have one or many interceptors that get uh, that intercept a particular request and then execute, right? So, okay, let me explain what all of these three points mean. Now let's say you have a simple client making a call to a particular action in a MVC application. We have a starts to MVC application over here. Now let's say you have like two different, let's say three different action classes over here, right? So this is this this is action one, action two, action three, right? So there are three different action classes. Now, when the request is made, right, there is this controller which decides which action to get executed. So this is the starts to controller. Now, what we can actually configure is that we can say, now let's say you want to have some kind of a cross cutting concern. Right, so this that's the whole point of interceptors. You wanna have a class which has some logic to execute cross-cutting concerns, which is, let's say it's common among all these three action classes. So what you can actually do is you can make configurable cross-cutting concerns. You can have like an interceptor over here, which intercepts all the requests that the controller hands to these three action classes. Right? So whenever a request is made, the controller picks up the action, but then what's happening is the interceptors execute before the action executes. And then there is post-processing, so there's both pre and post. So a part of the logic can execute before the action executes, and then the part of the logic can execute after the action executes. So let's say the flow goes like this. It, the interceptor logic executes, and then let's say this is the action that gets picked up. So the action executes, and then it goes back to the interceptor, and then back to the user. So this is what I mean by configurable. You can actually plug in these interceptors for any of your action classes. The second requirement is that the interceptor have to be Java classes, right? So you can write simple Java classes that have the logic to actually intercept these requests. And then the one or many requirement is that this could be one interceptor or it could be multiple interceptors, right? So you could have interceptor one, interceptor two, interceptor three, you could have as many interceptors as you want and they all execute one after the other, right? So you can have interceptor one execute, then two, then three, then your action, and then the post-processing logic is like the action after the action completes, you have interceptor three running, then two, then one, and then back to the client, right? So these are kind of at a high level of what interceptors should actually provide for us. So there are a certain set of steps that you need to follow in order to declare and use interceptors. All the interceptors that come out of the box and struts do all follow the same set of steps 
in order to declare themselves. So if you're going to take an example of us writing our own interceptor and we'll see what are the steps that are needed so that we understand all those steps. So let's say you're, uh, you're writing your, um, let's call it uh, my int dot java. Okay, so this is your interceptor class. This contains all the logic. We still haven't looked at what this class contains. We'll take a look at that later, but let's assume that we have written all the logic that does the pre-processing and post-processing, and you want this as an interceptor. So the first thing you need to do is to declare this as an interceptor. So what do I mean by declare? So you go to your stretch XML, See, this is your stretch XML. So you have to declare it. So you have an element called interceptor. And uh, this takes in a name and then the class. So you give it a name. You call it, say, my int or whatever. And you give the full class name with the package name. So you say your package name dot mind.java. So you give the full name and you declare it. So you're telling struts2 that this is supposed to be an interceptor, right? The second step is to actually use in your action. So again, in the struts XML, you'll probably have your action tag somewhere over here, right? So let's say you have your particular action for which you want this interceptor to intercept. So any call that goes through the action goes to the action needs to go through this interceptor first, right? And it has to do the pre-processing, then the action has to execute, and then the post-processing. Say that's your intention. So what you need to do is you need to go to all those action elements and then add this reference. Okay, so you're adding a reference over here. We'll look at the specifics of the XML later, but you're just adding a reference and the reference is to this name. So you've declared this interceptor saying this is an interceptor with this name. So again, in the reference, you don't have to give the whole package name and the class name. All you need to do is refer to this name. You're saying, hey, I've already declared interceptor over here. Call that interceptor. Okay. So these are pretty much the two steps that you would have to take in order to configure an interceptor. But the thing is, Usually, one interceptor is rarely enough, right? Because uh, you have a whole lot of interceptors that you want to execute whenever you execute an action. I told you that the whole, um, you know, all the features of struts too are actually interceptors. So you would want all of them to come and then your own interceptor to come. So it's basically, you, you're not dealing with one interceptor. Most of the times you'd be dealing with a bunch of interceptors, which means that you'll have to refer all those things for each and every action. So you have to say, my action one, refer interceptor one, interceptor two, interceptor three, all that stuff. Then action two, refer interceptor one, interceptor two, interceptor four, whatever. So you have a whole lot of references for each and every action element, which is actually a pain. So Struts has actually come up with the concept of what's called as an interceptor stack. So what you do is you bundle all the interceptors that you would normally want into what is called as an interceptor stack. So this is again an in a configuration in the starts XML. So you have an interceptor stack and then you refer all your common interceptors together. Again, the reference is actually the name over here. So these names are actually getting referred over here. So you refer all the names, list on all the names of all the interceptors that you want. And then of course, in the right order. So let's say you want interceptor one first, then interceptor four, then interceptor three. So you basically list them in the order in which you want to run, right? And then put them as a stack. So it's kind of like a preset of all your interceptors that you want uh, together. In that case, once you do that, then you don't have to refer to all the individual interceptors over here. All you do is refer to the stack. You say, for my action, apply this interceptor stack, right? So that's the easier way. So you can either specify a single interceptor in the action, or you can specify a stack of interceptors in the action. Both of them are possible, but either way, 
you will have to specify a declaration of the interceptor. So you write your class and then you declare the interceptor. Okay, so now if you take a look at the struts XML, you will see all these things applied to all the interceptors that we that we have as a default. So again, to go to the struts XML, go to the struts to jar, which is in the library. Okay, so in the struts to jar, the root itself, you should see a struts default.xml. And we learned that the struts default.xml is auto included into our struts XML. So all this configuration is actually applied to our struts application, any struts application that we write. So if you look here at the package struts default, right? This is this is our concern because we are actually extending the struts default. So all this configuration is a part of our package. So you see here, this is the interceptor declaration portion, right? This is the first step. So you see there is a node called interceptors and it has all these individual interceptor ele elements. So each interceptor element has a name and a class. So name is kind of like a short form, so you don't have to put the whole you know, uh, reference every time. And then the class actually specifies which Java class has the interceptor logic. So in this case, the interceptor called alias has this class associated with it, the alias interceptor in this package. The interceptor named auto wiring has this action auto wiring interceptor class associated to it. So this is the first part, this is the declaration part. They have declared all the interceptors that come with struts to, and each of them has a unique name, okay? The second thing they've done is they've actually created all these sample interceptor stacks, okay? So they have given a whole lot of combinations which you would normally use. So you have something called as a basic stack which contains these set of interceptors. You have a, a validation workflow stack which contains these set of interceptors. So all these are like common combinations that people would typically use that the Struts2 development team have given as presets. So you can pick and choose whatever you want. One thing I want you to notice here is that some of the interceptor refs, actually you take a look at this one, right? The validation workflow stack actually has an interceptor ref to basic stack. So you can have a stack pointing to a stack. So you can say, I want this stack to contain all the interceptors in this stack and then interceptor validation, interceptor workflow, right? So you can mix and match a stack declaration and an actual interceptor name. So it applies, if, whenever you mention a stack, it applies all the interceptors of that stack, and then it applies all the other interceptors, okay? So yeah, so these are some of the preset stacks. So as you can see, you have all these stacks. You have uh, chain stack, i18n stack, um, and here you have the default stack. So we know that the default stack is what gets applied, right? So let's say, let's open up our, um, our struts XML, right? So in order to apply any particular stack, let's say you do not want the default stack, let's say you want to apply, um, let's pick one of those here. Let's say you want to apply this one, right? Params prepare params stack, okay? So all you need to do is go to your action. Let's say you want to apply it to the tutorial action. So all you need to do is go over here and enter interceptor stack sorry, interceptor ref. It's pretty much the same syntax as this one, right? Interceptor ref, and then give the name. So I can give the name here. Here the name can be a specific interceptor name or a stack name, okay? So here I wanna apply the stack. So I just put that stack name over here. So now what's gonna happen is whenever tutorial action is called, Stretch is gonna look up the stack, right? And the Stretch default, and it's gonna apply all these interceptors one after the other in this order, okay? So this is as simple as that. I can give a stack name here, or I can give a specific interceptor name. Now the question is, without this, right? Let's say this was not there. We did not have this before. Okay, so we had just given the action we did not have any specific interceptor declared. 
And I told you that the default stack that was applied was the stack called the default stack. Now, how does struts2 know that this is the default stack that needs to be applied? Well, it's not really the name. It's not because this is called default stack. You can call it anything else. But how would struts2 know what's the default stack that needs to be applied? Well, the answer is this particular declaration over here. See here, after all the interceptor stack declarations, there is this element over here which says default interceptor ref is the default stack. So what this means is for this particular package, right, for, let's go back to the package declaration over here. All this is inside this package, right? All this is declared inside the struts default. So for the struts default package, the default interceptor ref is this, the default stack. So you can give any stack name over here. Okay, you can give a complete stack or you can give a specific interceptor name. So whatever you give here is gonna be applied to all the actions inside that package by default. Okay, so since our package is extending the struts default, the default interceptor that gets applied is what's declared as default in the default package. Okay, so if you want to change it, you can provide your own default interceptor ref inside your package. And so in that case, this package alone will have that particular thing applied. So in our, let's say in our search package, right, you don't want the default interceptor ref to be the default stack, so you want to change it. So you can apply your own custom default. So that particular uh, interceptor stack or that particular interceptor is going to get applied by default to all the actions inside that package, okay? So this is how the struts interceptor configuration is working right now. And this is what you need to do in case you write your own interceptors. We're gonna take a look at how to write our own interceptors a bit later, but I hope the configuration of all the default things are clear.